clarifying just uh, our time together. Um, if you had a sense of adequacy by the time we finish, what is it that you would would do? Um, it's a good question. I guess if we were done and there was a sense of I've done enough, if that's kind of how I understood your question. Hmm. If I had a feeling of I've done enough uh, or a sense that I had done enough, um, it would be just, um, you know, an, an affirmation or a confirmation or, um, or a, um, I, I always struggle to find the word that, that I'm looking for sometimes, but, um, the validation, if that makes sense, that, that, um, I don't know. <laughs> um, just hearing and hearing an outside voice that that hears kind of all of the things that were on my plate and all the things that I was struggling with and can say, you know, yeah, I mean, we were there too. We understand how that goes. Um, you know, um, and just Cause, cause I feel like, or in, and I, and I'm, and I'm confident in the plan that we have moving forward for coming, for bringing our youth group together. Um, I feel like it's a good strategy. I feel like, um, you know, my co my co youth minister and I have, have written a good, a good plan. We've run it by three or four elders and they've all said, this looks like a great plan. Y'all have done a good job on it. So, I think going forward, there will be, it will be enough, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like, right. and it will be a good step and it'll be a good step in the right direction. So um, in the last 24 hours, we were able to make a hire for a second intern for this summer, um, which I'm excited about because we'll have just more help around the ministry this summer. Um, so just, just a reassurance that I'm, I'm not, a, I'm, it's like, I know intellectually that I'm not alone because everyone is dealing with the pandemic, right. but it's nice to know just to be able to talk to somebody and say, yeah, like, I just, I hate that I can't do this. And I hate that I can't do that. And I, you know, I'm, I'm also grieving the loss of this and I'm also frustrated about that. And, you know, just to, just to know that I'm not sitting here the only one going, man, I wish I could do more. And everyone else around me is going, well, why aren't you doing more, you know, kind of thing. I don't know. I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, but I think, I think those feelings of, of inadequacy are just demons. If I'm being really honest. What, what story would you tell me about Lance? Um, <laughs> that, um, that it is, you are, I am capable of reinventing myself. Um, you know, after, you know, you do something for 15 years and you kind of get used to doing it a certain way and you always dream of what it would look like to change and what it would look like to implement some different practices and take a totally new approach or have a different philosophy or whatever. And maybe you're able to implement small things. You know, I do this philosophically a little bit differently, or I have a slightly different approach on that. But for me, um, I would be proud to say that I, I had to take a hard, you know, we shifted gears hard and I had to adapt and I had to grow and I had to learn how to do things I've never done before. Um, and, and trained volunteers differently and, and worked with students in a much different way 
um, redefined boundaries, worked within the context of what we had to work in and say, you know, what I love is, is helping students. And we figured out, we figured out how to do that. Um, and so I would, in a year, I my I would, if all things, if all things were trending in a good direction and, and we were getting ready to go out the story that I would tell for myself would be, would be one of, of, um, allowing myself to be, uh, open to change, allowing, allowing God to, to direct my, my mind to new ministry avenues, uh, to follow the spirit, to, um, to reach our students in ways that would be unconventional, you know, and, um, and not just setting back and saying, you know, here's the program that we set in motion. And if you come, you come, if you don't, you don't, but <laughs> we're actually seeking those kids out and, and checking in on them and, and helping them grow. What else? Um, in, in what regard? <laughs> in the, in the terms of the story that you're sharing about yourself. Um, I just, you know, I hope that in a, in a year's time, um, I have a, a higher confidence in myself to, um, to be capable and with our conversation. Um, are we, are we on track with what you desire from, from an outcome of this conversation? Like, what do, what are you hearing yourself say? Uh, or do we need to kind of pivot and, and go a different direction based on something else that you, you've said? Uh, no, I feel, I feel good about where we've been so far. And, um, you know, I think speaking out loud and saying things like um, wanting to take um, a shift and approach that focuses on discipleship is good to verbalize. Um, you know, that's maybe a word that I haven't used yet in the context of my church and in my ministry that I need to, um, and really put a, a, a pinpoint on and define that word for everybody so that we all understand like what it is, what we're talking about okay. when we use that word. Um, but, um, but that, that's, that's something and then the conversation about that we just had about recreating and reinventing, you know, that that's been good for me to, to think through. So. Okay. Which, which area uh, would be more helpful for you to keep uh, going into and, and leaving this conversation with a clear um, action? Um, probably, probably the, um, I guess the, the conversation about, you know, maybe pinpointing the, the, the definition of discipleship and talking about you know, helping, helping cast a, a really specific vision so that everybody understands what our objectives are right now and what we're aiming to do, what we're not aiming to do, especially, you know, what we're, it, our objective right now is not to bring camp back right now. It's not to, you know, whatever. Um, but we're worried about, or our, our focus for right now is going to be on this one thing. And so maybe talking through, talking through that a little bit more would be helpful. Okay. So you're at a four. Well, let's just, let's just assume kind of get some things squared away with discipleship, whether it's a day, the next week, two weeks, 
Um, where does that move you in terms of this confidence skill? Um, I think that if we're You know, if, if we set out this this kind of idea, this vision or this objective of we want to really lean into discipleship with our kids and we really want to coach them <laughs> through um, through this weird, weird season that we're in. Um, and it's something that everybody's catching on to and they're saying, Hey, we want to be a part of it. How, how can we get in on it? Um, then that's going to be something that causes my confidence level to go up. Okay. Um, if it's something that everyone's like, you know, as they, if they respond to it in a way that says, um, why are you asking me to do this? Like, this is your job. <laughs> that's going to be one of those things that's, that will make the confidence stagnate. <laughs> um, and it will, you know, could even knock it down just because part of it, part of the message that I've given to the church that I'm at right now, since I've been there is I want, I want them to catch a vision of, our students need more adults in their lives, not less, um, especially adults who are guiding them in a direction of God and minding and tending to their spiritual well-being. And um, it seems to be one that they've caught so far and that they're really buying into. And so to, to it, it would be perplexing <laughs> which would affect the confidence for them if, if that was the response. Um, so it would, it would make me think that maybe I'm not communicating it right okay. or I'm not casting a good enough vision. If they, if they're questioning it and pushing back on it, then maybe it's not clear enough. Okay. And so. What are the, what are the parts of discipleship? Um, that need to be communicated? Um, I think that what the way that I heard that question, I think there's a lot of things that you could say to that. <laughs> um, but I think first and foremost, it's building a genuine relationship with a student where the student doesn't. What do you want? What do you, the person watching this video want at home, at work, in your marriage or leadership? Are you drifting through your life frantic? Fearful, exhausted, lonely, doubting, insecure? I've been there, and this question is the path to hope. What do you want? In two years, five years, ten years, how are you going to get there? Hope is not a crapshoot. At times, it may seem like smoke and mirrors, but research shows that hope is a clear choice. Choosing hope requires a framework, structure, and a safe conversation, allowing you to break free from the isolation. And right now, you can choose a calm, confident, and connected life. If you are ready and brave enough to choose hope, then let's connect have a conversation.